Hey everyone, today we received another report on inflation. And like the last few reports, this one was also higher than expected. So I wanna take a few minutes and talk about how this could impact the 2023 cost of living adjustment. But before we jump into that, I do think it's time for us to start thinking about the possibility of inflation being the next big threat to the longevity of the Social Security Trust Fund. So if you're new here and you're concerned about the future of Social Security, I want you to subscribe and click that notifications bell so you won't miss these videos that we're releasing in the days ahead. So every month, the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases the inflation data for the prior month. The specific measurement that the administration uses for the annual cost of living adjustment is the CPIW. That's the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Earners and Clerical Workers. But it's not really that much different than the normal consumer price index. So let's start by taking a look at last year's numbers, and then we'll compare to how this year is tracking. You may be surprised when you see this. In 2021, inflation started off fairly sluggish. And then in March, it unexpectedly jumped up to 3%. Then in April, it jumped up again. By this point, we knew that inflation was coming back, but the experts were telling us that this was an anomaly. It would be short-lived and would start to decline, but it didn't. Between June and September, it leveled out around the 6% mark and then started going up again. By December, the reported number was 7.8%. But again, we were told this was transitory and shouldn't continue and then we started having the 2022 numbers come out. The January number was 8.2%. Just look at that compared to 2021. And today, February's numbers were released at 8.6%. Again, way over last year. Now, these high numbers don't necessarily mean that the high cost of living adjustment is a certainty for 2023. It's important to keep in mind that the Social Security Administration only uses the data for the third quarter. So that's the data for July, August, and September. So if inflation starts to go down between now and then, these early numbers really mean nothing. But there aren't really any real factors present that could start to drive down these numbers in a meaningful way. In fact, it's the opposite. Russia's invasion of Ukraine couldn't come at a worse time for the U.S. economy. We were already feeling the effects of a pandemic-induced inflation, and this conflict is probably going to accelerate rising prices. Some experts are calling for gas to hit $5 or more per gallon. And as these energy-related transportation costs increase, those increases are going to trickle right down to the cash register. And it's not just the price of oil that's a problem. It's other commodities that serve as building blocks for lots of things that we buy on a daily basis. Those are increasing as well. And as those supplies get cut, prices are going to increase, which is going to increase the cost of the final product. Unless this Russia-Ukraine issue de-escalates quickly, we could easily see inflation headed to 10%. But there are certainly still some factors that could affect this, like aggressive Federal Reserve action and a few other outside factors that are hard to forecast. Whatever happens, I'll be here keeping you informed. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button too. That way YouTube will share this video with others who need to stay informed. Thanks for watching.